All right, thanks, Olga. All right, so I guess uh, specifically, we're just going to talk about data accessing data. Um, I guess starting from accessing data at CI. So this might be might as well be the easiest training you ever do. But it is still surprising the number of people that send us um, tickets or emails on the help desk. Um, to say, where could I find this data set? Or do we even have it? Or, you know, how can I get access to some data? So I'm just going to share. And uh, oh, sorry. I'm always goes back to me. I just want to close this first. Go to the right page. Perfect. So anything I'm going to talk about today, it's pretty much uh, available on our wiki. Um, so I designed this in this way on purpose a few years ago, and I updated uh, for this. So there's a page called that access, and it tries to cover um, anything that you might know, but if you got questions or you notice things which you think sound correct or anything, just let me know because it's really hard to keep everything updated. Um, so as I was saying, the first thing is how to find data at NCI. I'm kind of assuming that you might be doing most of your analysis on the NCI system. And some of this quite a huge amount actually of climate data in NCI, but it's not always easy to find. So some of it is listed on the NCI data catalog. So it's being properly curated. And um, so if we go in here, you're going to see what the NCI data catalog looks like. Okay, so um, this is based on a kind of metadata service, which is called GeoNetwork, and uh, follows up all the standards on, on uh, you know, kind of geospatial based discipline and stuff. Um, so NCI started this data collection a few years ago. It's still kind of relatively recent in an attempt to catalog uh, the huge amount of terabytes and petabytes of data and make it a little bit more visible. Unfortunately, uh, this depends a lot on the people who actually manage the data on the system. So not all the data is in there. And then there are some limitations, like if you put your data in this catalog, it's going to get a DOI. And so that doesn't really work very well often with um, data which is being replicated. So as you can see here, you can search for a data set. And I was going to show you how this search work because it's not the best search. So in the example, I'm going to show, sorry, if I want to look for precipitation, I might be tempted to just write there. I look for that. And all I'm getting is one data set. And I'm getting this because there's exactly precip written here in the title. Um, so there is a free text search for sure, but it's really kind of limited. You have to write the exact words. So you see if I write precipitation, I'm getting immediately all these results about more than 50 or something like that. So if someone didn't use the word precipitation in their title or in the main description, you're not going to find the, um, you know, the data set that you're looking. And often I know people look for variables rather than other things. Um, this can also be tricky, like for things like, I'm not sure if that actually the record is in there, but if you're looking for mirror too and you're just writing mirror, you might assume that you're going to find it but you don't find any result. Okay, the mirror too has been eliminated, but never mind. They used to work. So you you had to, if you don't find something you expect it should be there, just keep on going a little bit and you might be more lucky. As you can see, as soon as you put something in the first main, uh, main page, um, you get shown the filter or if you actually are just even in the first place, you can put here browse by topic or researches and say, okay, I want something to do with climatology. 
meteorologist to Mesphere and immediately open up this filter in which you can see that you actually selected one of the topics, but then there are other um, kind of attributes you can look at, like the type of resources. A collection is obviously a group of data sets compared to, I think you probably for Kudia, we might have Flex, so you can see like big stuff like CMF5 or ERA5 replicated data sets. Um, okay, and uh, this keyword, so I don't know if you're familiar with the field of research. Um, it's something used by the Bureau of Statistics and it's a way they have all this category which are actually getting updated. Um, on which there is a code, like in this example, uh, 0401 is atmospheric sciences. Um, and say 040102, now I'm just going a little bit random, might be meteorology, so might be something underneath the atmospheric science and so on. So most of the health science start with 04. Um, so this could be useful to find, to, you know, just narrow down your search. But unfortunately, as you notice, like here, someone put a slightly different um, spelling and they appear as different categories when they are the same. And this is yet another one. And this is yet another one. Um, it's not curated on the collection side. And so um, um, it depends really, the keywords depends really on how the person who created the record um, um, decided to put in. Uh, finally, you got uh, format souvenir. You can see you got net CDF forum barriers. So it's not the best tool to search for things, but if you find something, then you should be able to find some information. Even here, you can tell that it depends on the people. So for example, here there's not much information on what the data might be, but you should be, and I'm not lucky here. <laughs> you should be able to find eventually a contact and often is in the citation information if there is some. This is clearly probably a very hot record because NCI is trying to improve and eliminate our record. Well, not eliminate, but just, you know, asking people to, to put a little bit more information in the description and data set. Um, so this could be, say, your uh, the first thing to do. Sorry, I'm just going back to our page. Um, right, another thing you can do is to check this same wiki. So we're trying to list all, all the data sets that we know that you guys are using quite a lot. And uh, so if I click here, you can see that there is uh, quite a few data sets. Actually, I'm, I might have to fix this. These are mostly one that we manage, but my apologies, escape. But I'll correct this with this, which includes data set that we don't necessarily manage, but that are available again at NCI, like one that people ask a lot about is the AGCD, which is the old AWAP, which it's also um, from which the, the original record is in the NCI Geo Network. So what I've been trying to do here, as well as uh, sending you there for information. I've been trying to highlight some information which is not um, immediately visible or things that we know from the original producer or just, you know, highlighting things like um, if there is a license and how the data should be cited. And I had the here, for example, how the data is structured, which is not something that is des describing the main metadata. Um, as I said before, lots of these are actually um, things that we replicate. For example, now we got here the MERA2, and so we might put a little bit more information on these, although still obviously um, putting links to the original information on the, in this case, this binary analysis also to the climate reanalysis guide. And 
you can tell there's also a license and knowledge when and where you're going to find it. And if we do have updates or this pretty big one or some extra information, sometimes we produce tables for this big reanalysis so you can actually see what variable are in there. Okay, that was it. The last one. Um, has anyone got any question about this? Pretty straightforward, but okay. So I'll just go on. So that's the other thing we suggest to do. Now, I did spend actually like three or four days in fixing stuff, which was out of date just before giving this. And probably I missed some. So if you go on the CMS wiki and you find information that doesn't correspond with what you find on Gadi or, you know, which hasn't been updated or that is confusing, please let me know because um, having this kind of research is really important for us. It makes it much faster for you to find the data. It means that, you know, we have one source for all our users rather than having everybody asking us, uh, where is this data set and how is it organized? Um, so feel free to point out anything that need correction or things that I'm there and should be there. Um, so, if the wiki was so terrible or just simply there wasn't uh, the data anywhere nor in your network, um, you are always welcome to put in a question uh, to the help desk. And uh, there are data sets of which we download maybe just a few variable or we know that someone at BOM or a CSIRO have been downloaded or managing replicas of other things. And so we can either point you to the right direction to the person to ask to, or should this data set not be there? And if we we gonna kind of assess um, how useful can it be versus how much time and storage gonna cost us uh, downloading the data set for you. And if we think it's uh, okay to do that, we'll download the data for you. Usually anything that gets downloaded in this way end up at least initially in the UAA project, in which if you don't have access to, I suggest strongly you request it. I manage that, so um, pretty much giving access to anyone. But now every data project um, needs to have access that's not anymore word readable. Uh, it's something that NCI did um, to basically be able to work out how many people um, are interested in a particular data set and is it worth storing this data set um, because storage costs not just in terms of disk but also in maintenance and, and staff hours and things like that. Um, so to request access, you have to go on mynci.org.au, like for any other project. Uh, I'm not just going to click on that because I assume you probably done that. Um, oh, maybe another thing actually came out yesterday on the help desk. So I just want to show you. Um, so if you, someone asked yesterday, I think if the why they couldn't find uh, a data folder in the remote desktop from BDI. So you can always work out uh, if there is either a problem or not. Uh, if um, there is access to um, on the BDI for a particular data project, then you're gonna have this something like that, like changing um, access. So like this project has asset to tangent. And that's because not everything, not every data project get put on automatically onto um, the VDI. This has to be requested by the lead CI of the project. Okay, there's just a little the two and okay. So this means also the a lot of the data sets that, for example, are in UA8 will need to be reorganized and there are other data collection that will need to be reorganized uh, because of this change that NCI introduced. It's 
taking a very long time. And I'll show you later another page in the wiki where you can see how this is progressing. And, and that's the reason why sometimes we have to move data around. Though I know it's annoying if you got scripts and things, uh, we try to uh, send warnings to the user in the group before doing very big change at least. Okay, so we uh, data set OSID on NCI, as I said before, that are managed by Clex, and so that should bring us back in this other category. So there's quite a bit of stuff. Um, not really everything even we have is listed in here at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we, as I said before, we try to keep this updated as possible and I'm regularly trying to go through. We also have data set that we have uh, published We NCI, and these are under the Klexen ARCSS data collection. Um, so they are available on the NCI threads catalog that we're gonna have a look at later, which is useful to access the data remotely, but are at NCI, they are in the KS32 project. They used to be in U8, and there's a quite a few of them. Um, these are all data set that we publish. Sorry, that's another one here. So these are for Clex and these are for the AOC collection. So this is, these are all data set that either we publish because they might have some relevance for other users. And so um, every time you think that some of the data you produce can be used by others, I totally recommend to publish and we're soon gonna have training on this. And so you can get a DOI and be properly cited and there's no confusion about what people have been using, uh, but also because it's more and more a, a common requirements when you publish a paper. So if you're gonna publish your data, uh, we ask them through NCI, um, that's where they're gonna end up eventually in the KS32 project. Other big data sets also by NCI, on which we previously collaborated just recently with the Commission Era 5, uh, which is the latest reanalysis in ECNWF, which we were hosting just temporarily. And now NCI is downloading and managing the data and managing potential requests. The same is for symmetry, it's fairly small, really, and it's available in its entirety. And then there are replicas of SIMA5 and SIM6 and some of the Cordex data. These are all managed by NCI at the moment. Um, we did develop a tool um, that is a common line tool, but also can be used, integrated in Python, since it's Python based, which is called CLEF. So you can, um, by clicking here, going into the readme in the documentation, we just updated actually, um, we're just going to do a new release. So it's gonna be useful also to look for codex data. What this does, a query what SIMA5 or codex data we have locally based on attributes you pass, but also um, can match this to what is actually published on the main uh, ESGF system, so on the main remote catalog, and even allow you to put in a request for data that's not yet available locally uh, with NCI. I mean, we'll just prepare the request for you for what's missing. We do have a couple of blogs on this, um, on our blog. If you don't know the, about the CMS blog, that's also uh, just probably Google it here. I mean, that would be interesting actually to see if it comes easily or not. I guess it's a, in the induction uh, or hmm, no, I guess it should be in the main page. So maybe, you know, there's a radio okay, there is a link here to the blogs. Um, so that's always useful to know. And yeah, so we have a couple of blogs on how to use it. Um, and we're happy to, we welcome suggestion on features you might want to have added. Um, 
we developed that partially uh, because these big collection are really complex and in um, particularly with simplify was really tricky to find stuff. Okay, then there are other um, data set that I'm alighting here and one was the AGCD, as I say, that was the AWAP because there's tons of people who use and always ask about it. Uh, there's the Australian Operation Where the Red Archive, which is actually another a data set managed uh, by NCI, I think together with Geoscience Australia. Um, we look already at the records and usually not all, but most of the data which is listed in the NCI Joe Network, it's also available on the FREDS catalog. Now FREDS is just like a kind of data portal which has been around for quite a while and which is tailored to NetCDF and HDF uh, kind of file. So I'll show you here, this is for example, our publication data. Uh, just in case you've never seen something like that. Um, basically, once you get to the main page, oh, interesting. There's no data there. Okay, cool. Um, you're going to see here there are a few data services. Um, they should be just an HTTP server, so you can just download this data. Um, you can add viewers, so you can open up and then click in here and have a look at what's in here, like run off and you start plotting the data. This is probably the standard call map. Uh, might not be tremendously good for this. You can click on, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this and get information on what the value might be. And you can even build um, simple and quick animation. Uh, now, I think this is a data set that we um, published previously because NCI doesn't allow all the services at the moment on uh, through their threads, but whatever threads catalog you're gonna find, you're likely to find these kind of services. Um, another one uh, which is important can be opened up, which we're gonna talk about um, a little bit later as well. Um, Actually, let's do it now while I'm here. So you can see opened up as a, it's another kind of protocol which allows you to access the data. You could here just get your NetCDF file or get it and ask a version. If you see here now, the URL end up with a dot and C. I can see all the global attributes and all the various variable. If I start uh, selecting something, so if you go back here, you can see now that I have a selection for longitude and from step zero to 719, every single step, or I can change that and that URL is gonna change. Okay, now, um, so you can see you can use this page basically to select something and then you could potentially download it. Uh, the usual way in which people use opened up though is not directly from the web page, but is um, directly from software that understand this, like uh, Python with all the barriers, NetCDF4 and X-Array and uh, MATLAB and R, they all understand um, the opened up URL. So you can pass, sometimes you might have to use slightly different command, but in lots of cases now, you actually just pass these instead of a NetCDF file and you get the data. And as you can see from here, it's great because you could just select if you have a really big NetCDF file instead of downloading it, or maybe then there is a new version I have to go back and download it again. I can just get exactly the subset I need and um, just use that. Then there is the NetCDF subset. Um, this is a similar concept, but compared to the other, uh, you it's just more useful to download straight on from the web. It's particularly useful if you have data sets uh, because I guess threads allows you to do that. It allows you to say aggregate a lots of files and presenting them then to the user as a single uh, file. So you can have an entire time series and then you can go in that time series and say select your small region and download that across uh, multiple files. 
So it can be really useful in that way. Okay, still about opened up, which was at the bottom. Sorry, I'm just not respecting my same order. So I brought here something about opened up, how to, um, and we have a blog, one of the one I was talking about before, which uh, show an example. So this is one of the case um, in which, for example, someone did ask for this data set to be downloaded and I discover it was available on opened up. It's one example in which it was aggregated on opened up and it was one of his data set, which is really small, but has tons and tons of files because there's new files every day. And uh, just by using opened up, you can basically get the latest version and the extended time series every time you access it. So here shows how to do it in X-Array. And I'm not going through the whole example, but you can see that pretty much once you have the correct URL and these kind of the form, the web form I showed before can help you uh, creating the URL you want, including with a subset, um, you can then just open it as you will do just with the open underscore data set, which is the usual common for X-Array. And then you can select whatever you want. We X-Array actually doesn't load all the files. So it doesn't matter if you do your selection after um, or before, but we other software uh, where it's important to select beforehand that you can just add your selection there. And I think probably uh, there was some explanation on how to do this here. So that's the kind of syntax you use. There's other links in this also pointing out, I think later on, um, these are all climate related repository. They're using opened up and there's many more. I should probably have tried to increase this. And one of them, for example, uh, uh, this site includes a tutorial. Um, so if you're not familiar and we opened up, uh, just I suggest you do get familiar because it's a really neat way to get data very quickly and without wasting storage, um, especially if you might just want to explore some data before knowing you actually want to download it. Um, so I'm just scrolling up and down. Any question? So good, all right. Um, Another um, place where you can find data, which is more specific to Australia and which is not necessarily at all specific to climate, is the Research Data Australia repository. Um, this is produced by the Australian Research Data Commons, which used to be called something else. I think Australian Data National Services. And it's actually like a, um, a big federal project to help people managing research data. So they do all sorts of things. And so one thing they did right on from the start is to try to encourage every institution and every research center in Australia to list the data set with them. Um, before NCI did anything was the only chance we had to actually list our data sets. And so we basically kept on doing that. Um, once we produce a record with NCI, we also replicate this in uh, Research Data Australia. And uh, I shifted the link over here under the Australian Data Portal. I'll just show you what it looks like. So you can go here, you, had, you can select the fields and search for data and various things, I don't know if I put in the five, anything which has got that on the, it's gonna show it, it's, if it's either in the title or as a keyword or things. And you can see as well, um, people have started listing software, which was something, um, one of the few places where, one of the first places where you can actually publish all the software. Um, one thing of these, um, so 
is that normally you don't load the data on this one. So I don't know, I'm picking up a random data. Oh, that's one of ours. Of course, that's in Rails. <laughs> but you have under this, for example, in this case, as you can see, this is linking you back to the Geonector catalog for the official metadata landing page. And this is the, if you want to download, it sends you back to the NCF Preds catalog. It usually tells you how to cite the data sets and so on. One good thing here is that if you're interested in something which is a bit borderline or another discipline, I don't know, maybe if you work in at all with impacts and stuff. Um, and you can see sometimes also you can divide by the different sources. Um, for example, here you can find everything in the Australian Ocean Data Network, which was a, another example, or oh, Australian Data Portal. So I try to list here some of the biggest one, uh, like there's the, of course, uh, BOM and the, the Climate Data Services, pretty big, um, where you can get, especially usually people can go here to get, um, weather station data, uh, just be aware that there is some data, it's usually the data from the bureau is free, but there is some data which is not directly available on disk. And so they do ask a contribution to retrieve data, which is maybe particularly old or um, maybe you can get easily the monthly time series or daily time series, but if you want something uh, like hourly or every 30 minutes data, that kind of thing, they can't store it all on disk and so they need to actually ask someone who goes and retrieve it for you. Um, and in that case, you will be asked uh, for a payment and um, it goes through that data portal we don't really have any agreement at the moment to simplify this, um, but we're trying to talk to them. Um, another from the bomb is the tropical cyclone data services. I pointed out TPEC, which was one of the earlier, um, still as a, a kind of old Fred's catalog, which is probably going a little bit, um, becoming a little bit obsolete, but still offer things like NSEP to and updated every week um, and other data sets which are not necessarily available at NCI or Business Climate Future Tasmania, and to kind of more regional scale. Um, and AODN, the Australian Ocean Data Network, um, as also, also ocean related data, possibly less. Uh, model output, uh, more like observations and satellite and instrument, just generally instrument kind of data. Um, finally, there is heaps of global data portals. Um, and actually I should point out uh, that um, usually you end up in this if you want to also kind of, you maybe looking for something, they say for some precipitation and you're not sure um, which data set is best. Um, and you start looking around and, you know, uh, putting in Google precipitation data sets and stuff like that. So um, rather than just going completely random, while, you know, it's good to have an idea that it will be startup portal exist, um, NCAR, and then there is another organization called reanalysis. Um, provide a review, in this case, a reanalysis of this um, climate data. And I strongly suggest this. And this is, like they say, data discovery guided by expert. And so you can find all sorts of data sets in here. Like I say, for example, these are div divided in category, precipitation data set, you can go there and at least a few. And so if I go in GPCC, as you can see, they put in what are the uh, description, what are the key strengths and the key limitations. So these are scientists who plotted this stuff, look at it using an analysis and um, 
what, what their opinion is. Uh, we show you the uh, metadata kind of uh, in a summarized way, and then they tell you where you can get the data, although don't get GPCC because I copied that already for you. And then there are various references and other things. Um, so these are and reanalysis.org uh, is pretty much the same concept, but it's just for reanalysis. And I think one of the things they add as well, it's really handy metrics, which I'm not sure exactly. Um, maybe it's on that, or oh, sorry. Maybe it's here? No, they clearly didn't update it properly. Anyway, there is also metrics somewhere hidden in this. Um, that will show you like a table um, in which you can see at a glance which reanalysis might suit you better. Uh, so while they might not be updated constantly, quite clearly, they're still really good website. And, uh, and then I put here a few other global data portals. I, uh, these tons, I lighted the paleoclimatologies from NOAA uh, because that's one that we also replicate some of our published data for people who do paleoclimatology. Um, there's the Ocean Observatory Initiative, which is kind of similar to AODN um, in Australia, but kind of a world level. Uh, some of these might have visualization tool like this NASA GPL and NASA Herc data portal. And um, this, the Copernicus in Europe, which is the one that provides from ECNWF that provides all the ERA5 and these other bigger analyses. Um, rather than I lighted the whole catalog, which is huge, I alight in here the toolbox, which allows you to do a few to run simple um, comments and simple little script and explore the data. Um, there's more and more uh, data portal which have this kind of um, visualization or in this case even kind of um, you can actually I think calculate things out of it rather than just visualizing. And I think this is really good because allow you then to download um, you know, uh, just the product rather than having to maybe download the files. And again, it'd be more exploratory tools, but you know, it can give you an idea if the data can be useful to you or not. Giovanni is another really big, um, mostly based on satellite data, which um, allowed online visualization and analysis. And uh, finally, there are other, these are again, Australian, but the data repository that include climate related data set, you might uh, interested. I think some people actually in the CLEX uh, from Sydney could very well uh, contribute to some of these, particularly ORIN, the Australian Urban Research Infrastructure Network. So this is slightly different data. You might be interested if you work. This is all to do with cities. Um, um, if you work a little bit more with impact and stuff, there might be interesting information. Um, yeah, I just point out that Google is now a dataset search toolbox. And as far as I know, although I haven't, this was still the better version when I tried last time, um, even dataset we publish should end up there. Um, so they were going to, you know, include as many dataset. Um, repository they could. Um, so that potentially another way to discover things we haven't listed yet. Um, I went through all of these already. So I think I've talked a lot. Uh, I might just stop um, sharing and anyone's got any question or clarification. <laughs> 